Dinesh Saraf, uh, the chairman of ONGC. Mr. Saraf, many thanks for joining us, sir. We are given to understand that the in-principle approval has come in from the cabinet now for this mega merger to go through. Mr. Saraf, your first reaction, if you can take us through the details that you can share with us in terms of how this merger process is likely to proceed from here on. You see, I have, first of all, I have no news on that other than uh, what is coming on the media. But uh, I, uh, I really mm -hmm. understood that uh, this matter is coming to the cabinet today. So it seems that it has been approved. And uh, I see this as uh, a big, big positive for the company, its operations, and uh, the mm. uh, future outlook of the company in terms of its sustainability uh, 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 with respect to crude oil prices. So it's a big, big positive. Uh, Mr. Saraf, before we get into the synergies, sir, uh, and the benefits that you see uh, for ONGC with this merger going through, the point that we were just discussing in terms of how ONGC will actually uh, fund this uh, uh, particular transaction, uh, what kind of incremental borrowings will you need to make, if at all, or will you need to look at uh, selling your cross-holdings uh, in, in uh, IOC, for instance, to actually be able to go through with this? We have already chalked out our funding plan for this and uh, mm -hmm. at the moment I would not uh, like to share that because that's, that itself could be a market uh, sensitive uh, information. So I would not like to uh, share that with uh, the media as of now but we have already uh, uh, okay. uh, uh, prepared it and uh, let me also tell you that uh, uh, that itself would be uh, uh, positive from the point of view of the market. By when do you believe that you will be able to share the details of the borrowing plan? And uh, if you can give us some ballpark range of the kind of incremental borrowings uh, you will be required to make, without giving us the specifics, but a ballpark range of the kind of borrowings that you uh, are expected to make. It could be, it could range from 0 to 28,000 crores. <laughs> okay, zero to twenty-eight thousand crores. That's a, that's a clever response, there, Mr. Saraf. Uh, I I I guess I'm not going to get anything more from you on that front, sir. But if you can now share with us about, uh, uh, you know, we are given to understand that this merger process itself could take about a year or so. Uh, so, what kind of synergies do you foresee uh, for for both these entities going forward? We also learn, and again, this is source-based information. I don't know if you can confirm that for us or not. That HPCL will continue to operate uh, as a subsidiary of ONGC, as a listed entity. So can you take us through more details of what information you do have about the plan, sir? Uh, first of all, I don't think that uh, this transaction to be completed would take as long as one year. It, it could be completed uh, okay. subject to uh, the uh, government's preparedness uh, much earlier. That's number one. And number two, mm. the uh, HPCL would remain, uh, is, uh, would become a subsidiary of uh, ONGC and it would remain a separate listed company. Yes, it will continue to remain a separate listed company. But uh, uh, what about uh, the IOC stakes? Uh, will ONGC sell the IOC stake? Uh, uh, whether to fund this buyout, uh, you know, is, is that something that has been evaluated, assessed? Is that on the table? Many uh, options have been evaluated, and uh, this is not the time to uh, share that uh, what would be our preferred course of action. But this is an option that is being considered, sir? Uh, I can't uh, uh, tell even that. You can't tell us even that. Let me then ask you uh, some, try and get from you a little more specific details, Mr. Uh, Saraf. Uh, will ONGC Mangalore Petro Petrochemicals Limited, uh, will the merger with MRPL be prior to the merger of ONGC and HPCL, sir? Is that something that is yes, considered yes, yes. as well? Uh, there, there is a strong uh, uh, case on merit of merger, of subsequent merger of MRPL and HPCL. Uh, no view has been taken on that. Uh, it has not even been considered by the board. So, uh, but uh, uh, this would be uh, 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 something I mean, which is meritorious. Okay, but uh, by when do you believe that some of these matters could be taken to uh, to the board, sir, for a decision? Now that and the in-principle uh, approval has come in from the cabinet, no, no, uh, we have not heard anything from the uh, government as yet. 
as soon as we uh, hear from the mark, uh, from the government we would uh, chuck out our uh, schedule uh, Mr. Saraf, again, something that we require clarity on in terms of the valuation exercise, sir, uh, will this be uh, market-driven or is, there, uh, is the government uh, or, in fact, uh, the boards of the companies uh, looking at appointing an independent valuer, sir? Uh, what I understand is that uh, HPCL is uh, uh, a, uh, a traded company, actively traded company. It is one of the, uh, the PSUs which was the very first to be uh, listed. Uh, 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 markets are quite deep. 47% uh, or so is uh, uh, with the public. So uh, uh, I don't uh, think that uh, any valuation is required. The uh, uh, listed uh, price itself uh, indicates valuation. Okay, so you're saying that it will go by market capitalization. That's how the valuation will be done? Uh, I mean, that, that's our call. It has to be decided between the buyer and sellers. You're saying it will be decided between the buyer and the seller. Again, sir, a broad timeline that you can uh, take us through by when we will see the buyer and the seller uh, sort these issues out? Uh, I think it will be uh, more clear in the next uh, couple of days or maybe a week. Uh, uh, we would know that uh, uh, what is the desire of the uh, seller uh, uh, once we discuss it with them. So let's wait for a week. Hmm. But wouldn't it be prudent, uh, Mr. Saraf, to actually have an independent uh, valuation, have an independent valuer for HPCL, sir? Why the decision not to? Uh, uh, as of now, I don't uh, think so. But uh, uh, let's see uh, what the seller says. Okay. Uh, because if I remember correctly, sir, and, and I, we have uh, several, uh, we have the former oil secretary with us, we have the former ONGC chairman with us as well. Uh, I think when, it, when the IBP stake sale happened in 2001, the government had set a base price of 340 crores for IBP for that 33.6% stake, then competitive bids were called for, etc. And the government, I believe, had mobilized to the tune of 1,150 crores uh, uh, by way of that transaction. So mm -hmm. would it not make sense to, uh, to look at an independent value? Valuation exercise here as well, sir. Uh, as of now, I don't uh, uh, think so. Uh, but uh, uh, let's see uh, what the uh, what's the desire of the sellers. Okay. What about minority shareholder approval, sir? Is that something that uh, will be required uh, for this transaction to go through for the approval for this merger? It is just a sale of uh, uh, the shares by one shareholder to uh, a member of the public, being ONGC. I don't think mm. that uh, the, the, uh, requ uh, the any requirement for approval of this transaction by the minority shareholders. So you're saying that minority shareholder approval will not be required, and this is something that you have uh, uh, been able to get uh, legal clarification on? So legally, you've been able to wet this, that minority shareholder approval will not be required? Yes. Okay, so that's an important clarification as well. And then, uh, so there is no open offer either. Uh, uh, there will be no open offer that will be made as part of this uh, transaction? Perhaps not. Perhaps not. So is there still a, a, a window for, for a change in that plan, sir? Uh, no, I don't think that uh, there would be any requirement uh, so far as I know um, uh, and uh, so far as uh, what we have been advised as of now. Okay. Uh, uh, as I try and get more specifics from you, uh, uh, Mr. Saraf, if you can now share with us, sir, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, what this is going to mean once this process is complete. I mean, the government's idea is to create this, uh, uh, you know, oil and gas behemoth. Uh, what is this now going to mean as far as these two entities are concerned going forward? Yeah, so uh, the two big companies, uh, once uh, they combine, uh, so uh, it would uh, become a single, uh, uh, bigger group and uh, it would become uh, 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 more sustainable, as I just said, uh, in terms of uh, uh, sustaining uh, financial sustenance uh, uh, irrespective of the crude crisis. 
what would be the margins that you would enjoy, sir, now that you will have the synergy benefits of this combined oh, entity? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you know, oh, what is it that... Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the synergy benefits would be huge uh, because uh, today, uh, as you know, that uh, the crude prices are down. So the ONGC's profitability is also down. Uh, whereas uh, GRMs and the marketing margins are up. So uh, this makes a uh, lot of sense uh, for uh, uh, ONGC uh, to make this acquisition. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, if and when mm -hmm. the food prices go up, uh, the, the, at that time, GRMs are expected to come down, marketing margins also are expected to come down, subsidy concerns could be there. So at that time, I mean, uh, again, it would be uh, uh, the, the SCCLs uh, would also win because they would be with a stronger company. So uh, it's a win-win situation. Mm. So will that mean that uh, your margins would be in the range of between 15 and 20 percent, sir, broadly? Uh, ultimately, the, uh, the, uh, um, uh, the uh, value to the shareholders would increase. Ultimately, the value to the shareholders will increase. Since you're talking about value, sir, we've got, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, analysts here who track the company very, very closely, both ONGC as well as HPCL. Uh, I, I would request you to, to just take a few questions from them as well. Let me uh, first go across to Prakash Divan of uh, Altamount Capital, part of the CNBC TV18 uh, uh, team that uh, looks at the oil and gas space. Prakash, uh, we've got uh, the ONGC chief, Dinesh Saraf, here. Your questions to him. Yeah, so I think I think it's it's quite clear that uh, the big uh, if in this entire uh, equation, uh, Shirin, seems to be what happens to the MRPL stake uh, which ONGC as well as HPCL own. So my biggest uh, concern out mm. there is is uh, MRPL likely to be merged with ONGC or should it be bandied along with HPCL's refining business because both of them are into pure refining and it gets together and there could be a swap ratio that. ONGC needs to look at and pay much lesser, and hence the borrowing also, which we are talking about, mm. is much lesser. So, uh, to Mr. Saraf, yeah. it's a question whether it makes sense to merge MRPL into ONGC or uh, 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 taking away the HPCL stake, or does it work the other way around where MRPL 16,500 crores, which ONGC owns today, uh, is, is actually used as a currency to take the HPCL stake in? Uh, uh, as I also said earlier, uh, it makes uh, a lot of sense to merge uh, MRPL uh, uh, and SPCL. Right. Uh, though, though there is no formal decision, uh, and this matter has not even been considered by any of the boards. Mr. Saraf, just hang in there. We've also got Sanjeev Basin with us of IAFL. Sanjeev, uh, go ahead with your question for uh, Mr. Saraf. Yeah, so I think uh, it's a perfect, uh, you know, uh, merger because in the longer run you will have uh, the upstream, uh, uh, that is ONGC, ONGC Videsh, you will have uh, the marketing of OMG, the oil marketing company and you will have the downstream of MRPL. Now the return on assets of uh, HPCL to, as on today would be almost three times what ONGC does on return on assets, you know, ONGC's return on assets is something, uh, I would say, a 10, 10 as a multiple and uh, HPCL is 3, 30. So, so how well will these synergies and how much time will it take to play out? Because that would be the real uh, icing on the cake because the valuation of ONGC will actually be undeciphered and that is where I think there will be a lot of money to be made. How will you comment on that, uh, uh, Mr. Shraf? No, as I already, uh, already said that a uh, lot of synergies there, uh, I have not, uh, uh, I don't uh, uh, remember the uh, return on assets of uh, ONGC and SPCL, but a lot of synergy is there and uh, this is, I mean, uh, what we want to encash. Uh, sir, well, what, well, where will this take uh, the combined entity as far as the global pecking order is concerned in terms of size, Mr. Saraf, if you can share some details on that. Uh, what will it mean now as far as the global pecking order is concerned? I, 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 I think we have not calculated that. Uh, I think the analyst would uh, tell but you. But what would you on. broadly think, sir? I mean, where... No, I don't think that... You, you know this uh, business well, sir. I don't think that it would make a very, very significant difference uh, with, the, uh, with this mm. uh, transaction uh, when it happens. Uh, mm. uh, still, I mean, uh, mm. there would be many companies much larger than us.
Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Because if I just look at uh, an Exxon Mobil, for instance, it's $350 billion, Shell at $220 billion. So ONGC, HPCL combined will, uh, will be about, what, $37, $40 billion, so much smaller. So from yeah. a global perspective, sir, it doesn't really, doesn't really change the needle much then, does it? No, I mean, one transaction cannot make any one of us globally, I mean, big-sized of the global standard. But here the rest is totally different how to create more value. Hmm. Uh, what about eliminating overlapping resources? And I would imagine that that is going to be a challenge uh, as part of the integration process. Uh, would you foresee that as being one of the key uh, impediments, uh, one of the key challenges that you're going to have to deal with? I don't think that uh, that's a challenge at all, so far as the uh, uh, transaction relating to share purchase is concerned. Uh, but uh, where would you see the, the overlaps largely, sir? No, the overlaps would be uh, between uh, MRPL and SPCL, not in uh, HPCL and ONGC. Okay. Uh, so again, you know, where I'm looking at what analysts uh, have been saying. The payback period uh, expected is nearly five years or so. Is that something that you agree with? Is that a view that you agree with? Uh, I, I, I do not know, very frankly speaking, that what would be the payback period. Uh, uh, in any case, it's a long-term asset and it creates a lot of value to all the stakeholders. Okay. So, uh, you know, what about your debt-to-equity ratio, sir, uh, post this deal going through? How much do you expect the debt-to-equity ratio to, uh, to change, go up by, post this uh, uh, proposed deal? This debt-to-equity ratio would depend on where we are in the range of 0 to 20,000 crores. <laughs> and you won't tell us where you are going to be in the 0 to 28,000 crore rupees? Uh, not, not, not today. <laughs>